Welcome back to the Farmstead. We're glad you're here today. We're at the Learning Yard uh, with all of our bee folks and our military veterans. And uh, we're talking a little bit today about what we're doing about hive beetles um, to try to keep them at bay. Uh, before we get going, though, I want to uh, shout out and, and thanks to we got uh, we got a bunch of new honey here um, on the stand. We've got uh, Dan from Red Dog Ranch brought us a bottle of his uh, his Spring Flow. Uh, we were just down visiting a bunch of folks in uh, Tennessee, Alabama, Florida, uh, South Carolina. We've got uh, a nice fresh jar from uh, Bruce's Bees, uh, Mike Berry from uh, Berry's Best Honey. We've got uh, Walker Bee Ranch, Bob Walker, Craig Midget uh, down at uh, Spring Haven Homestead in Tennessee. We've got the, uh, this, this, is a, this one's pretty cool. The very first jar of 2022 from our buddy Tennessee Tim McCandless down in Cullioca, Tennessee. Uh, we've got uh, some uh, spring honey, some black locust honey from here in Ohio uh, from uh, Bee Dad Honey Bees, Z's Bees. Uh, this one is cool. This is from Keith Spielman at uh, Half Tracks and Honey Bees. That's a great looking jar there. Hail Hives. We've got uh, Josh Hager. Bee Works, he's down in Tennessee. It was a lot of fun meeting with uh, some of these really awesome uh, beekeepers, but even better, just good people who, who care about what's what doing, when, what's right, um, helping out folks. Um, it's just, it's really cool. Our local, Chad. Where's Chad? There he is. Thanks, Chad. And uh, here's a great example of some, uh, some uh, honey on the round from Bruce Jenny down in Dothan, Alabama. That, isn't that nice? And um, can't forget, we've got uh, Lisa at Grammy's uh, Midwife Homestead. Now that might be, a, that's kind of an interesting jar of honey because it's, if there was anything that might be better than honey, it'd be jam or jelly. And so uh, she made us a jar of uh, fig, fig jam. So, so that's cool. So just a little shout out to the folks who uh, sent some honey out to put on display here at the farm. Um, has anybody seen hive beetles in their colonies yet? Yeah, seeing them? Okay, are, are we seeing them or are we seeing them as being a problem? One, two, Dan's got them. Here and there. You know, when we see hive beetles here and there, you crack open a lid and you see one or two, three, not a big deal. Pull out a frame and we look and we see one or two. Still not a big deal. When it's a big deal is when we see not only the hive beetles, but we see the larva. That's a problem. And that's a big problem. When we crack open the lid of a colony and we see hive beetles running all the way around, or they might be on the inside of a lid, and when we pull this out, if we see them scurrying all about and you that little thing on the inside says, uh-oh, what is going on here? We got to understand that there is a symbiosis, right? there is always going to be the host parasite relationship with beekeeping. Everything that the bees do, everybody else wants. There's, there's, there's protein, there's carbohydrates, there's a place to live. Everything wants that. But when do we start doing something about it? And, and when is that extra pest pressure too much? Well, you could argue that any hive beetle is too many or any mite is too much, but we have to be realistic with what we're going to do about it, how much time that it takes or what we're going to use um, to actually do that. How many have heard that the only thing that you need to prevent hive beetles is a strong colony in the sun? Heard that over and over and over again. And so while I'm not here to argue um, anything, I've seen the exact opposite. You can 100% have a colony that is in a, a single 10 frame box or doubles or triples that can be absolutely overloaded with hive beetles to the point where the hive beetles keep multiplying, laying eggs, they're going through the larval stage, the pupa stage, and can absolutely slime out a big colony. It happens. Well, this is not a fear tactic. This is not to say, this is not fire and brimstone from the pulpit that your, your colonies are always gonna crash from hive beetles. But it is something to be mindful of when we see them to try to do something about it. If we can slow them down or if we can stop them, great. We won't ever get to that point. The most vulnerable hives, however, are the ones that are those really weak one or two frame splits. You know, it was that queen cell that maybe didn't take. Um, it was the time that we get into the dearth and you have a small colony 
that's getting robbed out, those, yes, agreed. Those are 100% very vulnerable to being attacked by any kind of outside pressure. But just because we have a big colony doesn't mean that it is uh, totally safe and immune for hive beetles. Okay, so when, what do we do about that? There's a lot of things that we have done um, in the past that we have had good results for. And if you've seen Mike Berry's video, we're not, this is not a how-to, right? This is only how we do, this is what works for us inside of our context. Um, so I just want to throw some ideas out for you so you can kind of have some information uh, to make a good choice for you and your context um, in your bee yard. This episode is brought to you by Nature's Image Farm. If you're interested in nukes, packages, queens, or supplies, visit us on the web at naturesimagefarm.com. Before I got um, really comfortable using this, let alone talking about it, we've, we've trialed this for several years now. Um, and probably the most um, swaying uh, trial that we did it in is we, we put it in about a hundred nukes that we made splits in. Nukes are the more sensitive, I think, to, to colonies crashing and then having opportunists come in to try to rob out that, that situation. So um, we baited up about 100 nuke bottoms with this, right? And we were going through, everything was fine, not a single hive beetle until I got to these last two. And if you ever have a hive beetle problem, you'll know it before you get there because you can smell it. It smells horrific. Imagine just a big handful of maggots, right? They smell, right? The hive beetles smell. They're eating on that, um, on that protein. They're burrowing up um, in where that protein's at, eating the protein. You'll see cappings and a protein mess all over the bottom. Where you'll really see this is when a colony gets robbed out. We, see, we talked about this two weeks ago. A big colony, small colony, doesn't matter. You get into this time of year into that dearth when you have bees that are getting robbed out those robbers are coming in and uncapping everything in that colony, making a mess. And all over your bottom board is loaded full of pollen particles, little pieces, little, little uh, wax fragments with, with honey, um, little cappings and debris, all kind of things on the bottom. And guess what? That is just, that's a three-star buffet for a hive beetle. And they go right to it. They start to feed on it. And then in that thickness of the material, they start laying up their eggs. And before you know it, you'll, you'll look down and see a sea of hive beetles on a bottom board. It is absolutely nasty. It can happen quick, too. A lot faster than you think. This episode is brought to you by Nature's Image Farm. If you're interested in nukes, packages, queens, or supplies, visit us on the web at naturesimagefarm.com. This is what we call beetle butter. Let's, uh, we'll go ahead and make it, and then we'll talk about kind of how it works. So we're going to take a uh, nearly a three pound tub of Crisco. I feel like this is turning into a like a cooking show all of a sudden. Should I have an apron or a hat? I don't know. And no, I am I'm probably not qualified to even appear to look like I know how to cook because I don't know how to cook. Okay, so there we go. All right, so there's about a three pound tub of shortening, Crisco, whatever brand you want, you name it. Okay? All right, and then one half cup to one full cup of I prefer pool grade diatomaceous earth. Now look at the color of that. It's white. I know. What colors are shortening, Dan? Ivory. Or white, I guess. Sure, Dan, ivory. All right. So that's what we're looking like so far. All right. We're going to want 10 drops of eucalyptus oil. Okay. That looked like about 10 drops. As you can see, I think a lot of us get hung up on, we are looking for an exact science with beekeeping. Um, I'm just going to speak to my experience. There is no exact science to beekeeping. Um, and as soon as we rely too much on the exact science, we can kind of get ourselves into a little bit of trouble. So that was about 10 drops-ish. How about that? 10 drops-ish. That Was that going to cover us for all of those things? That was not 10 drops. That was 14 and a half. Okay. 
It smells good. I don't know if it was that much. But, but how many drops does it take? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two, three, four, five, six, Thirty-two and a half drops of food coloring. This is going to look like murder inside of these colonies. Well, that's what we're doing. We're making murder sauce, I guess, aren't we? All right. This is going to look nasty in here. <laughs> we stir it. Now, the idea is that when you guys see hive beetles inside of your colonies, where do you usually see them hanging out? Corners. When you see them getting inside of a colony and really making a mess on the inside, where do you see them at on the inside of those, where, where the pollen is, right? And what is pollen? Protein. So, so hive beetles are on the hunt for protein. Well, does anybody have any theories of what we're using the diatomaceous earth for? Yes, sir. To kill them. Yes, to kill them. That's what we're doing. Um, just like mites uh, and little, little fleas and things like that on livestock, when we use diatomaceous earth, what we're actually doing is we're attracting the hive beetles to an extent. If they're already in a colony, we want to give them a place inside of that colony that they want to gravitate towards to eat the protein. But what are we doing in that protein? We're adding diatomaceous earth. Does anybody know what diatomaceous earth is? They're like... They're like little tiny fossilized sea creatures. They're really gnarly looking. But what happens is, is when we get this all mixed in here, the reason why we use a food coloring is when we're mixing a white Crisco with white diatomaceous earth, how do we know when we get it mixed in there? You don't. You don't. But if we put a food coloring in there, and it's all one color, now we have an idea if we're actually thoroughly mixed. It also helps us to look on the board for that little, little piece of color, um, how much material is still left inside of the colony. There it is. It's, it looks like I'm making frosting. Don't taste it. Don't taste it? Okay. I'm not exactly sure what all the eucalyptus does um, but I have made it without the eucalyptus, and it works, but it's not super effective. But then when I make it with the eucalyptus, it's way more effective. You know, when I'm smelling this, like, there's not, not a lot of eucalyptus smell coming off at all. You know, but it's just enough that I think it helps to bait in and attract maybe the high beetles um, to that area. Um, I'm not sure. Is this harmful for our honeybees? Well, I guess it could be. Uh, to a certain extent, um, but what we're, what we're not doing is putting this in a situation for the bees where they're um, really going to be in a position to consume this. Thank you. So what we do is we take a little spatula and we'll take a little smearing right in the center of our bottom board like that. Very little. Also right here in the corners. And that's it. That's not a big deal, is it? Easy, pretty cheap to make. Um, and it's not in a position in a colony where the bees are actually going down through and eating or consuming this. They might walk through it, they might leave it alone. I've never seen dead bees stuck or on their side or personally have never seen any kind of ill effects with this. What I have seen is it completely get rid of hive beetle problems. That's a big deal. Um, there's a lot of ways to kill bees, uh, but I don't feel that this one is the one to be real concerned with. But having colonies get robbed out and get slimed out by hive beetles, um, that's, that's a real big problem. This episode is brought to you by Nature's Image Farm. If you're interested in nukes, packages, queens, or supplies, visit us on the web at naturesimagefarm.com.